One of the most common components you're going to want to use with Quasar is of course the button component. So let's come in here and say Q-button. It's really easy to get started with. We'll start by adding a label, something like click me, save it, and straight away we get that button. Basic design, we get a bit of a shadow by default, but of course we'll be able to style that however we like. Now let's say at click and have an action, because of course we need to actually do something when the button is clicked, and we'll say handle clicked here. Now I can come down here and say set up, return, handle clicked, and then we'll come in here and say const handle clicked is equal to, and we'll just console.log clicked. Save it, open up the console, and now when we click on this button, we get that console log. So it's as simple as that, just use at click, give it a method, and then you can start doing stuff after a button is clicked. All right, now let's dig into the fun stuff. We'll come in here and say no dash caps. That's basically going to remove the auto capitalization because by default, your button is going to be capitalized. So we've got that option available to us. We can also change the size. Let's make it large in this case. And we can go all the way up to extra large and all the way down to extra small. So let's leave it at large just so it's a bit easier for you to see. Another thing we can do is change the color. So let's set the color equal to primary. And there we go. Of course, we can use any color in the Quasar palette, indigo, all sorts of cool colors like that. What else can we do? We can change the color of the text. So let's just imagine we have a black button and then you want to change the text dash color equal to something like indigo. There we go. So that kind of looks cool. So we can also change the icon equal to something like, I don't know, let's go with person. And there we go. But if you want it on the other side, just say icon dash right. And if you want two icons, one on the left and one on the right, you can say icon for the first one. And let's set that equal to delete, save it. And there we go. Now we've got an icon on either side. And we can also say stack here. So if I change this to stack, it's going to make that icon stacked. Another thing we can do is change the alignment of the content inside of this button. So what I might actually do is bring back that icon right and remove stacked. And now we can come in here and say, for example, the width is equal to 200 pixels, maybe a bit wider. Let's try 400 pixels. Cool, so we got a super wide button. Then we can say align is equal to left. And that's going to align everything to the left. Of course, you've also got right, but we've got some other interesting options as well, like center, around, and basically all of your flex related stuff, between, and then we've also got evenly. And that's going to distribute the content evenly throughout the button. That actually kind of looks cool. I like the way that turned out. Anyway, what else can we do? We'll get rid of that to bring us back to a basic example. We can also stretch this button. So if we say stretch here, by default, it's just going to take up the entire flex area. So where would you actually use this? Well, let me get rid of it for now. How about with a Q input? So if we say Q dash input, and then we have a template in there, and we set that equal to after for the slot. Now let's go ahead and put the button inside of there, save it, and this might not work. I think an input usually wants to have a model dash value. So let's set that equal to uh, my input, just a simple string like that. Oh, forgot the T. So there we go. This probably makes more sense if it's a smaller size. So let's leave it as the default size and let's make it just an icon. So I'll get rid of the label in here and I'll get rid of the icon right as well. And there we go. So in this situation, you might want that button to actually take up the full height of the input, in which case you would say stretch. And there we go. That kind of looks good in this scenario. So there might be situations where you want that button to basically stretch and take up the space. All right, what else can we do? We'll say Q dash button again, save it, give it another label and put a color back into it. Let's make it hit me. And then let's give it a color equal to, how about brown dash four? Brown is such an underrated color. There we go. I think that looks quite nice. So let's have a look at some of the styling we have. We have a lot of control over the button styling. We can come in here and say outline and using the color, it will set it to an outline button. You can also say 
flat. And notice that flat basically removes the color unless you hover over it, then you still get a little bit of that brown color in there. So that can be good to know. We also have unelevated. This is just like flat, except it's going to set the background color to brown in this case and the foreground color to white. So unelevated and flat are very similar. It's just an inversion of the colors there. In fact, I like to use unelevated a lot more than flat. For me, unelevated is kind of just a way to get the flat design for the button. And I'll use flat if I want it to be understated. What else can we do? We can also say here rounded, and that's just going to round off the edges of the button if you want that design. And you can also say round. Now round isn't going to look very good if you've got too much inside of the label. It's usually if you've got, for example, just a letter in there, or if you're just using an icon, like person, for example. What else can we do? We can also change it to push. And that just gives it a little bit of a sort of push effect. And notice that when you click on it, it actually pushes down a bit. So it gives it a game feel. I think this is the kind of button that you might want to use in a game. Or if you want it to really stand out, or if, it's, if the button's performing like a larger action, kind of like a job in the background, that's often when I would use push. I use it rarely. It's mainly for those situations where you want it to stand out or, or communicate to the user that a lot is going to happen when you click on this button. What else can we do? We can also say glossy. I personally hate glossy, but some people like it. Gives it that glossy effect on the button. We can say fab, which turns it into a floating action button design. And if you want, check out the floating action button component to learn more about this. But just as a quick rundown, you might say here q-page-sticky. And then we set the position equal to something like bottom right. Oh, we might need to have a dash in there. And then you'd have an offset. So for example, an array equal to 12 and then 12 to push the button out a little bit. So this is where you would use fab when it's like one of those buttons in the bottom corner of the screen and you wanna be able to basically just click on that button easily if you're on a mobile device. What else have we got? Might just get rid of the sticky stuff and leave the button. We also have fab dash mini which is basically just the mini version of a floating action button. It gives you a lot of the default styling for that so that you don't have to put it all in yourself. So Fab and Fab Mini are for that very specific case where you want to have a floating action button. But once again, check out the floating action button component video to learn more about this. We can change the padding. So if we set that, for example, to 20 pixels, we'll get a lot more padding. Oh, have to get rid of that colon there. So we can add more padding. Or we can set it to something like zero pixels to remove all of the padding if you want a super dense button. Another thing we can do, if I just remove that and save it, notice that when I click on this button, we get that little ripple effect. See how, see how there's uh, that kind of circular thing that's coming out of my mouse when I click on the button? We can get rid of that very easily by saying ripple is equal to false. And that means that we're not going to get that ripple effect anymore. I personally like it though, so let's remove that we can make the button dense. So especially if you have a table and you want that button to very easily fit inside of that table, you might want to say dense here. And there we go. It means that the button is specifically designed to fit in tighter places. You might want to use something like round and dense if you want to have an icon that sits in the top right of your layout. And maybe when you click on that button, it opens up a menu where the user can then like log out or change their password, stuff like that. This is where you might want to use dense to make the button a little bit smaller. Now here's the really cool stuff. We can also say whether or not the button is loading. So if I say here, loading is equal to true, save it. Now we get the loading spinner on the button. Super, super handy if you're doing Ajax requests. And then of course, if that's set to false, then it's not going to show anymore. So you can obviously model a value here, and then you could say loading is false by default. When I start sending the Ajax request, set it to true. And then when I get the response back, or you can say like a dot finally, if you're using promises, set that equal to false. So we won't go into the details of that because it kind of goes beyond the scope of this video, but hopefully you get the idea there. Now, maybe you want more control over what that loading spinner looks like. In that case, we can say here, template. And then we can go into the loading slot and add our own spinner. So let's say Q-spinner dash, and I think there's one called gears. Let's try that. Save it. And now let's set loading equal to true. 
and it's going to be using that custom spinner component. How cool is that? Another thing we can do is basically show whether or not this button is disabled. So if I come in here and say disabled, oh, not disabled, disable, and set that equal to true, save it, then it's going to be disabled and it won't click anymore. So if we have a click event on there and then we try and click on this button, so how about this, at click, we'll use that method we created earlier, open up the console. Now if I try and click on this, nothing will happen. Let's set disabled equal to false. And look at the design, by the way. Notice that it becomes a little bit more brown. And I might just use like a darker brown to show this a bit better. There we go, we've got a dark brown. If it's disabled, it kind of gives us more of, of a disabled feel to the button by lightening it a bit. So we set that to true, of course. Now when I click on this button, oh, disabled, true, oh, sorry, false. <laughs> now when I click on that button, it's going to work and that, and that at click handler is going to be called. Super helpful. All right, let's get rid of that, move back to a more basic example and move on. We can also set a loading percentage. This is really, really cool. We can say percentage is equal to 23, for example, and that means it's 23% loaded. Ah, and the reason that isn't working is because we need to set here loading equal to true. So if you have loading true and you've got a percentage, it's going to show you what percentage of the loading is done. Super handy if you're running jobs in the background, or maybe you're basically sending requests back and, back and forth from the server to check how much of a background job is done. You can do stuff like that, and then we can pump it up to 80, and then when it's done, you would set it to 100%, and then set loading equal to false, something like that. So how cool is that? We really do get this amazing breadth of functionality using Quasar's Q button component. So what else can we do? We can also take the user to different routes. So basically, instead of using the route component that you get with view router, we can just add in here two, and then say something like slash whatever. This is just like two when you're using view routers um, routing component. So if you wanna dig a little bit deeper into that, then check out view routers documentation, but we'll just do a basic example for now. So let's say other dash page, save it. Now when I click on here, it takes me to other page. Since it doesn't exist, we get a 404. But you get the idea. You could also put inside of here something like an object, and then you could use named routes and all that kind of cool stuff. But that goes beyond the scope of this video. So let's move on. Another thing we can do is change the type of element we're using for this button. This is particularly useful if we want it to be an A-link. So let me get rid of that for now and just show you this. If we open up our console here and then we click on the button, let's find the button element. Yeah, notice it uses a button element by default. If we say type is equal to A and then save it, that element is going to change. So let's go back in there and now it's using an A element, an A tag more is what I should say there. So now that we're using an A tag, we can say href is equal to, and then just go to something like google.com, save it. And now when we click on there, it takes us to google.com. So let's go back and see what else we can do. We can also change the type equal to something like submit. So if you're using an, a native form here, you might want to change that type to submit. Whoa, something weird happened then. It kind of spazzed out for a moment. Let's refresh the page. All right, it's still working. Yeah, so if you need that functionality, you can set the type equal to submit. And the last thing I wanna show you is how you can put an avatar into the Q button component. So let's come in here and just use the default slot. We'll say Q-avatar. Avatar is a great component. Definitely check out the video for that if you're interested. And let's set the size equal to 42 pixels. I am stealing this from the documentation, which I often do with these videos just to keep things consistent. And then we can say the source is equal to https slash slash pixum.photos. And then let's get a photo that's 100 by 100 in width and height. Now in this scenario, we would also wanna change some of the settings here. So let's change the button to round and that's probably about it. There we go. Now we've got a button, but it's showing an image in the center there. And if I refresh the page, this is basically going to give us a different image every time. 
So how cool is that? It's really easy to throw an image directly into your button. And if you want to spin it with that image, just use Quasar's Q-Image component. And now when I refresh the page, we get a cool spinner that basically shows you that that image is loading. Really, really cool. So that's it. That's Quasar's Q button component. I really love that Quasar takes something basic like a button and makes it ridiculously easy to use by default, but then gives you that extra amount of breadth just in case you want to dig a little bit deeper, just in case you have more advanced use cases. So once again, I hope you enjoy this one as much as I enjoyed making it for you. See you in a future video.